made it to Friday. Awesome. I'm Carl Azus, I'm your anchor here at CNN 10, and we start today in the European nation of Belgium. At a news conference yesterday at the NATO headquarters in Brussels, U.S. President Joe Biden said America had sent $2 billion worth of military equipment to help Ukrainian forces fight Russia. He announced the U.S. would spend more than a billion dollars on humanitarian aid for Ukrainian civilians and hundreds of millions on pro-democracy and human rights efforts in Ukraine and other nations. Analysts say the conflict in Ukraine has created the worst refugee crisis in Europe since World War II. The United Nations estimates that three and a half million Ukrainians have left their country, mostly for other European nations, though more than 270,000 are believed to have gone into Russia. President Biden said yesterday that America would allow 100,000 Ukrainians to move to the United States. The U.S. is a member and the biggest contributor to the NATO alliance of North American and European countries. And though Ukraine is not a member of that alliance, the U.S. president said it was standing together in opposing Russia's invasion. Putin was banking on NATO being split. My early conversation with him in December and early January it was clear to me he didn't think we could sustain this cohesion. NATO has never, never been more united than it is today. Putin is getting exactly the opposite what he intended to have as a consequence of going into Ukraine. The Russian government said yesterday that NATO's decision to support Ukraine proves the alliance wants the conflict there to continue. And it said the weapons that NATO is sending to Ukraine's military are, quote, reaping terrible results. Meantime, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky asked NATO for more weapons, including tanks, defenses against air attacks, and fighter jets. But that's one thing the U.S. has resisted sending to Ukraine. It's concerned that Russia would see the fighter jets as going too far, that they'd be viewed as an American expansion of the conflict. At this point, there's no end in sight to it. Extensive destruction can be seen in Ukrainian cities, and both Ukraine and Russia have lost thousands of troops in the war. NATO leaders are trying to figure out what to do if Russia changes its tactics and uses more deadly weapons, like chemical or nuclear weapons. President Biden said America would respond if Russia made a chemical attack, but that how the U.S. responds would depend on how the weapons were used. In the past, Russia has promised not to make or use chemical arms, and officials say there's no evidence they've been used in this conflict. Second trivia, which of these animals is not considered endangered? Snow leopard, slender snouted crocodile, basking shark, or giant otter? The International Union for the Conservation of Nature classifies all these animals as endangered except the snow leopard. The snow leopard used to be on the IUCN's red list of endangered species, and the animal is still considered vulnerable. Encyclopedia Britannica says there are between 2,500 and 10,000 snow leopards left in the wild, though other estimates put the number much lower. Their population is reportedly decreasing, though, and there are several possible reasons why. One is that they may be hunted for their use in traditional Chinese medicine. Does Disease may play a factor, as might loss of their natural habitat, but snow leopards are also known to attack the livestock of nearby farmers. So a conservationist is taking action to protect their livelihood while also protecting the snow leopards themselves. It is really a spectacular area of the world and especially in winter, it's so beautiful sense of remoteness, the sense of isolation is very acute and when you go further higher up or deeper into the heart of the mountains there is a very good chance that a snow leopard might walk right in front of me. The first time I heard a snow leopard roar I still remember a long time ago. Suddenly I heard this roaring call I mean, if anything, it was just sheer wildness. My name is Shafkat Hussain. I'm a professor of anthropology at Trinity College in Hartford, Connecticut. I work on a snow leopard conservation project in northern Pakistan that has been running for the last 20 years. I have never 
never seen a snow leopard in the wild so you are dealing with an animal that is very very elusive and its habitat is very difficult to study many times i have told my colleagues when you know we are setting up camera traps or doing surveys that i'm sure that a snow leopard is watching me from somewhere up there the snow leopards are incessant communicators i wonder what they would do if they had you know all this new social media technology right because just like we human beings we are always connecting and you can see the snow leopard you know doing the same by leaving all these marks in their territory there it's a spray or leaving their cheek hair as if these cats are trying to communicate with other cats in this big vast and empty landscape we have been working in close to 25 villages in the region of baltistan 95% of these people keep livestock and they also have small agricultural fields and every now and then their livestock gets attacked by predators such as snow leopard that really brings a huge economic loss for these people so then they retaliate by attacking and killing these predators we have set up close to 20 small micro insurance programs where local people get compensated for their losses the other strategy is to construct predator proof corrals because that is very impactful in the long run in reducing mortality from snow leopard attack we are also implementing a conservation education program ye book humne print ki hai unless we get the human equation side right it's very difficult to sustain any conservation effort in the long run we think that in our area we can claim that snow leopard population is stable there's also a threat from climate change and global warming with receding ice line but i think snow leopards will definitely be around for a long long time i hope that in the years to come snow leopard sighting will become a everyday phenomenon Doug was thought to be a potato. It smelled like a potato, it tasted like a potato. It didn't really look like a potato and sadly for the New Zealand couple that dug up Doug, it's not a potato. After finding Doug in their garden, they thought they'd stumbled across a record-sized spud. Doug weighed 17.4 pounds. But after extensive research and DNA analysis, experts concluded that Doug is a tuber of a type of gourd that might have come from a choco. Even if they were grounded, they weren't potato totally disappointed. They still had something tuber, and they could always put on their night shades and starts looking to spud the roots of another side for their veggie table. All they got to do at this point is to keep their eyes peeled. All right. I'm Coral Azus. Today's shout out takes us to Boiling Springs, Pennsylvania, where we are happy to see you, the students of Boiling Springs High School. We hope all y'all have a great weekend.